variety of solutions. You could use this material or this combination or that combination, and you determine which combination might be the best combination to use. And then did you, did you conduct a crude design, like this initial version? Okay, you had a very short time period. So now you're testing the, your initial design, and when they come out of the oven, I want to have a discussion about why some perform better than others. I don't want to talk about winners and losers. I want to talk about the design decisions, and I want to be very um, careful not to make anyone feel like a loser but have a constructive discussion. So this house was able to save the most amount of penguin. What aspects of this house, I'll talk to the group, do you think contributed to that? And then I'll say to a group that, that, that didn't save much penguin, what do you think you could do next time to make your house a better <coughs> insulator or reflector of radiation, something like that. So as part of the constructivist framework of teaching, I believe in talking, discussing, working together, and not having so much of a competitive, you know, competition aspect to engineering. Okay. So constructivism, students construct their own ideas, work through those ideas in the physical world, and then have these interpretive discussions to make, make sense and meaning of of those ideas. The elaborate part of the 5E is, is actually constructing the dwelling because if you think about, okay, engage was posing the problem, finding your prior knowledge. Um, explore was playing with the materials. Explain was some of the discussions about the three ways of heat transfer. And then the elaborate is to take that scientific knowledge and apply it to a problem and do an engineering activity. And then the assessment or the evaluation kind of takes place formatively as you're doing storyboarding and it takes place summatively with the post-test. So you can definitely see how design changes lead to effects lead to different data that you can analyze. And I like that, that there's definitely a, a relationship. In the research I've done on this curriculum with kids, the kids that had these, the demonstrations that you saw in the beginning, the cans, the spoons, the trays, the house, the mylar, the students that had those demonstrations up front before building the houses did better than those who had typical textbook activities. So because those five or six demonstrations targeted common misconceptions about heat transfer, the students were able to be better designers because they understood the scientific concepts deeper. So please encourage the teachers never ever to skip over those fundamental activities that lead up to the design challenge. Not only are they um, good for science content, but they really do help the students become better engineers. They are better designers because they have better scientific concepts. So that's it.